it's time to put the oil pump back in and uh, I don't know if I need to do this but what I'm going to do is I'm going to prime the pump with engine oil, engine oil because I've completely emptied it out it was there was you know it was old oil and basically as I moved it around it was all spilling out anyway so I had to uh, empty it out so I've got a syringe which I've uh, thoroughly cleaned and what I'm going to do is just get some engine oil and try and uh, prime this pump. It's just that I, I don't know if you have to do this, but I just didn't fancy putting it in without any oil in it. And, uh, whoa, there we go. Okay, it's probably going to come spewing out of here now, but um, at least I've got some oil in it. Uh, Actually, it looks as though it's dropped a bit. I can probably put some more in. So I should move it around a bit. Nope, that seems to be full. Now, I'm sure that's going to come pouring out all over my garage floor when I go to put it in, but um, I still prefer to do that than uh, just leave it dry. Um, once it's up in place, I may even try and get some oil in the side of here to fill the lower chamber. Um, although I'm not sure how successful that will be, but I'll give it a go. Okay. As you can see, the oil pump's now bolted on. Um, it wasn't too difficult, actually. And uh, contrary to my uh, fear, the oil didn't come spewing out all over the place. So I've torqued the three bolts to uh, 25 newton meters, which apparently is the correct setting. Um, the only thing you have to do is that the um, holes, I think it's this one down the bottom and this one on this side, they both have these sort of circular dowel things that you have to line up. And whilst you're doing that, you've got to juggle the um, oil pump sprocket and uh, guard into place and it's got to fit onto this dowel at the top i haven't bought this in yet obviously um so there's a fair few bits to juggle but actually it wasn't difficult quite honestly it was some um, fairly easy um so the only thing i've got left to do is to fit this bolt to hold the um the uh, guard the cover ch uh, chain cover in place and then put the left-handed thread nut on the end of the um, shaft. Uh, I will try and feed some oil into here before I put the uh, pickup on. The only other thing I was going to say was I did put a very small amount of Loctite on these bolts. I don't know, when you take them out there's a lot of oil comes out with them so I don't know if they go out into an oil gallery or something but I was a bit concerned that there's nothing really to stop them shaking and spinning loose. So I have put a small amount of Loctite, blue Loctite, this one, 2400. I put some of that on the threads and I'm also going to put them on the thread on the end of the um, drive shaft for the oil pump and, uh, and the bolt that locates this. I've got the uh, oil pickup in, it's not torqued up yet, so I've got to do that. But on the subject of the torque wrench, something I discovered um, just now is that when I did this uh, sprocket nut on this end, I flipped this into reverse thinking that I would get a torque, you know, calibration in the in, in the anti-clockwise direction and it doesn't and I was pulling on it and thinking crikey this is really tight and then I thought no this must be wrong and I, I used because the torque setting was uh, 30 newton meters I used m one of my other torque wrenches and it was way too tight so I slackened it off took the nut off check the nut check the shaft it looked okay um, and then I used the other torque wrench to uh, do it up so for all its expense and it is a nice torque wrench. Don't think it will do, or it, it just a warning, it won't do anti-clockwise torque, torquing. So um, that's a limitation. But anyway, uh, now we've got to do these up to 
25. Just check I've got it set correctly. I have. Okay. Yeah, so when you flip this lever, although it will let you undo bolts, the torque setting doesn't work in that direction. So just a word of warning there. And I need to be careful I don't damage this pipe. Again, I put a very small amount of uh, blue Loctite on these as they're going into castings. So uh, that should be okay. All right. Oh my goodness. Um, oh, one thing I didn't tell you was I did pump oil into the bottom of here. It took about 70 millilitres and then it started to spew out. So I put about 100 millilitres in the top and about 70 in the bottom. Um, I'm quite happy with that actually because I think that's well and truly primed the pump um, which seems like a better idea than starting from uh, from a totally dry pump. Um, I didn't talk about how I cleaned up the um, the sump gasket line. I actually used a Brillo pad. No, not a Brillo pad. What am I saying? Scotch Brite. Scotch Brite. But I actually I had one of those rotating Scotch Brite things and I used that for a bit and just cleaned it up as best I could. You can see it's quite clean now. Um, and uh, so I'm hoping I'm going to get a nice seal with the gasket. I don't plan on using any form of silicon red hermatite. If they, do they still have red hermatite? I don't know. But I'm not going to use any form of sealant. I'm just going to uh, go with the gasket. Um, and uh, hopefully that will seal okay. I'm going to try and fit the sump with the camera in the way, but um, the one thing I've been warned about is to be careful not to um, smack the um, oil pickup pipe. Just pull that into view. Not to hit that with the baffle. You know, be careful as you put it in because the baffle obviously is very close to it now. So... Um, I'm going to just get it into place. I am going to use um, Loctite to hold the bolts in, or, or to, uh, you know, to stop the bolts shaking loose. But I'll do a couple up first just to hold it in place before we start to get into the all the Loctite thing. I'm also going to use a power wrench, <laughs> but believe me. I'm not going to, it's it's actually an impact wrench, but I'm not going to let it go anywhere near the impact level. It's just a way of running up the bolts quickly. Um, but I do want to get them in basically okay. Otherwise, uh, the danger of just relying on the on a power wrench is that you, uh, you actually just force them in cross-threaded. So I have to be very, very careful here. That's on undo. That's it. Okay, so, so that's all I'm going to do, just to that point there. Let's do the one down here. Okay, so they look about lined up. I think I'm going to uh, actually slacken them off a little. I might be able to do it by hand. There you go. So you can see that I haven't done it up with any any tightness at all because I can get them undone by hand. Um, actually, I'm going to slack them off a little bit more. There you go. Let's pull that across a bit. Okay. Right. Now we'll start to use some blue tech. I just, uh, blue tech, some um, Loctite. Just need to remember it's these two that I've put in without Loctite. And that's it. It's all on and talked up. So uh, next job will be to get the subframe back on the car. Um, so I can take the engine beam off and then I'll do the air box. And uh, I've got to put the new belt on the front here, fit the radiator and so it goes on.